30 on. That was a donation point here. Vadesco would be having a pretty easy hold to go up 40-15. Now it's back to 30 all. These are the sort of little openings that Nadal thrives on here. Vadesco needs a couple of big serves now. from the Dahl, he's uh, starting to get a taste in this game. It's a break point. Some of the best forehands of the, of the match from him there. Brilliant stuff. 30, 40. Just haven't seen enough of those tonight so far. Maybe this is the change. response from Vadasco <laughs> on a big point. Brave going out to the, the dull forehand on break point down. Just uh, up in the tempo at the moment. It's getting ahead of him in the rallies. Badasco will do well to, to live with this. Uh, just the increase of intensity from Nadal. First time as well you've seen Vadasco really gesticulate towards his corner. Just voice some uncertainty, some disapproval maybe. That's a big serve. Yeah, a total oh, challenge. On the left side, the ball has got him. It would be uh, ace number eight if it's called good. Nadal pointed to a mark that was a good half an inch out. Hmm. But how does Hawkeye see it? It will have the final say. And Nadal <laughs> is way off. <laughs> Nadal has two challenges remaining. Just shows you what the players see sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> totally different. They're not always right. Advantage, Nadal. Yeah, a little bit more juice on that that ball, and Badesco not moving his feet. Well, this game. Could be the difference between one set all or two sets to love for Vadasco. Too short. See how far Nadal is away from that and brilliant serve. Again, that's just not getting the job done, that type of shot mid-court.
Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I read that one early. Yeah. Another one of those rallies at the dull. Looks like he's out of the point. Not quite wide enough on that approach shot. What a, a passing shot. That wrap around forehand. Fourth break point of this game. Uncle Tony liked it. Oh, they broke a string there. Broke a, a string on the return to serve. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. Uses a synthetic string at Nadal. It's not natural gut in there. It's slightly harder wearing, a thicker string to get more purchase on the ball. Well, what a game this would be if Fedesco can get out of it. Psychologically, it's <laughs> good spring, good hang time as well from Vadesco. So you just stay up there for an age. That's for sure. Well, it deserves it. Thoroughly deserves that service hold. Rodasco face down four break points in there. And we're tied up once again and still we've yet to have a break of serve. Four games off. No point in saying we know, we wonder how Nadal's going to respond. We know how he's going to respond, but how will Vadasco, possibly more to the point, respond to really just getting out of jail on that game well that just increased the confidence and the belief
When you look at the, shall we say, unusual finals we've had over the years, is this much of a surprise that Vadasco's in the semi-finals and you know, could could well take it out here? If he takes the second set, then it, it could get seriously interesting. It, it could and. No, it isn't. I mean, it because, simply because that's why I think the Australian Open is is so interesting. It's always, to me, one of the most fascinating of the Grand Slams because it's at the beginning of the year. You never know how much the previous year has taken out of the top players. You don't know how they're going to react coming in here. You don't know who's trained the hardest, who's had the, enough rest. So you always get surprises here. And that makes it fun to watch because it's the most unpredictable of the Grand Slams. It certainly has been anyway for the last, well, as many years as I can remember. If you look yeah. at some of the finalists that have got through and semi-finalists that have come from nowhere. So it makes it a very interesting Grand Slam to watch. Yeah, Songa last year, Gonzalez, Thomas Johansson, who won the title, defeated Saffron in the final. That was a major surprise back then. Yeah. Peter Corder. Time. And the, the list goes on of people that have just made their name from the first slam of the year. Yeah. Well, there was the, the, the German, uh, Schuttler, against Agassi. Yeah. <laughs> that was a... Forgot about him. How can I get, forget about that him? That one was the biggest surprise probably yeah. ever. Arno Clement. Oh, no against Agassi as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just people you don't, you wouldn't pick at the start of a slam to go the distance. And we all knew that Vadasco was dangerous, but we didn't think a he was going to get past Murray, b get past Songa, and c be in this position against Nadal. Yeah, some effort. A lot of people have. Uh, Got some newfound respect for Fernando Vadesco. This will tell us a, a bit more about the uh, Spaniard. I should say older Spaniard. You just know what Nadal was thinking after he lost that previous game when he had the break points. I mean, a lot of players would think, how could I have lost that? He'll be thinking, well, I'm getting closer now. I mean, that's the kind of attitude that Nadal would have. Yeah. I'm almost there. Too. We've seen that that play from Vadasco a lot tonight, where he's given that sort of opening to the forehand side, and Nadal's gone for it, and then he's just gone over there and slapped a forehand cross court, and that one just didn't quite connect right. Two hours this match already, and it's still not even through the second set. Just a bit of uh, wildlife to be tidied up by the ball boy. Oh, crowd gave that a clap. Some people would have stepped on it and crunched it. It's 
Sato the other day in the uh, women's, uh, was it semi final or quarter final? They were, uh, moths were just falling down from the sky. It was too hot, couldn't fly, were just uh, dying on court, weren't they? Having to be swept up after every game. It was that hot. at least makes you play a volley. It's a long way back though, from Nadal there. And you can see how deep he is. Really deep the whole way. Look how far back he is for this shot. I mean, that's, what, 12 feet back? Not easy to pass from back there. Very short return. That one is going to get eaten alive. Stayed up in court, was well up in court, Vadesco. And Nadal has pulled this back to Juice, just two points away from levelling this semi final. Again, you're just waiting for Vadesco to show us his inexperience at this level. Remember, it's his first Grand Slam semi final. You're not supposed to play like this. smiling that was one of the best rallies of the tournament the shot selection from both players here was just the Dasco that backhand <laughs> slice that was absolutely brilliant the forehand what a joke that was <laughs> great stuff from both men oh. and look at that from the dial biceps bulging fist pumping Set point. It's long. Oh, and all of a sudden, we're at one set all. But it did take something truly, truly special from Rafael Nadal to level this one. What a semi final. Six games to four. One to <laughs> this is great stuff. Oh, boy. That was just beautiful yeah, to watch. On. What a game. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Rodasio was just going off for maybe a change of shirt and to regroup. Couldn't have played the set much better, Rodasio. Oh. But that forehand at Juice. Oh. I mean, have you seen a better forehand? No, that was the best one of the tournament that I've seen. We see the, uh, the stats there, more winners, but creeping up Nadal in that set. 
that first said he was way behind on winners. He has upped the tempo with the aggression. And the unforced errors is still staying at five, which I think, I believe that's what it was in the first set. Yep. So he's kept that down there, and now he's up the he's up the tempo, which is what he had to do. So that's just smart play from the dull, knowing what he had to do at 89 percent first serves, and still in the 70s for Vadasco. Well, it's just high quality tennis. That's all you can say. And now the tests again begin for Vadasco. Uh, he's handled it incredibly well. But you would think that he would he would be saying to himself <laughs> deep down I played a great set there and I still ended up losing it and now I'm once in all I've still got to win two more against this guy who is an absolute here it is this is the well that <laughs> forehand is just <laughs> frightening what a scrapper he is he's just mentally so strong that nothing affects him it doesn't matter <laughs> what the score is whether his opponent is playing out of his mind, he just thinks deep down, you've still got to win a point to point to point to beat me, and I'm going to be in your face all night. It's yeah. that kind of mentality. It's a shame they didn't stay on the ball boy that was running up to give Nadal his towel after that forehand because the, the ball boy arrived with this massive smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it was just. <laughs> he was enjoying it as much as we all were. Oh, what a match this is. And for the crowd, very knowledgeable group the Australians but there will be a, a lot of people in the crowd that we're, will not be that familiar with for Dasco and we're probably thinking as a lot of people that this was going to be a bit of a mismatch yeah. and <laughs> they are loving it absolutely loving it stunning standard of tennis maybe uh, just a good move by Vadasco to go off court here and slow it down you talk about sort of tactical timeouts mm. and we often bemoan the fact they're taking at the wrong time but I think for Vadasco smart play yeah just uh, a change of shorts by the looks of it not a top for Vadasco just to settle things down let the crowd talk about those last two points for two or three minutes and let Nadal just also settle down let the adrenaline uh, settle through Nadal's veins. Two sets of first class tennis we've had tonight. Two hours and eight minutes of play. Oh. Oh, by that, we could have a five hour match if it goes to five. Well, five sets at this quality stage, and the, 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 the amount of games that have gone to you know 30 oars and juices in this, it, it's been very few sort of easy games, long points. I mean, this is. Uh, and if it does go into that sort of length, then obviously that's when we really look at Vadasco's training and those running up the sand dunes with Gil Reyes. Well, that's when it will pay off. Great stuff. Nadal will start the third set. Third, third set, Nadal to serve. Fifteen on. Thank you. 
bit sloppy there from Vadesco. Should have done more with the approach and the volley was uh, not pretty there. Solid hold. First game, first game. This will be an interesting game here for Vadesco. Needs to re establish himself after losing that set. The momentum switched obviously to Nadal's side. Now he's just held serve. Vadesco got to get himself back into this. Send out a message that losing that set was no big deal. No surprise that very few people have left their seats for this one. Of course, a, a Friday night in Melbourne, so nobody really has to go to work. Unless you're a Real estate agent, I'll try and sell a house tomorrow. That's a better return. Love to take it. It's a gutsy point here from Vadesco. Looked like he was out of it. Read this one very quickly. Nice soft hands there just to maneuver the racket head. Short against Nadal. He's been spot on with these attacks into the net when he gets Nadal on the run. He's reacted very quickly those first couple of steps. He's managed to pick Nadal's shots up while they're nice and high in the air, for a comfortable volley. The 
return of serve again, just a little bit short. 40, 15, that 15. one there just gives Fedesco the chance to jump on top of that one again. Nicely timed into the net. Solid technique on that backhand volley. It's just a big difference now with Nadal's ground strokes. Not all the time, but a lot more than he was doing. So in the first set, he's he's making Vadasco go for shots now where he's in an awkward position, where he's backing up a little bit, where he doesn't can't dominate the rally. Nadal can get an early break here. The third set might be over quite quickly. Facial expressions are just changing yeah, slightly a now. A little bit, yeah, agreed. But Asko's really just got to, to dig his heels in here. Believe in his shots and the way that he's played so far. Keep Nadal out of his mind if possible. Uh, again, something that you might be feeling it, but you don't want to be showing that to Rafa. He feeds off that. Great point, Nadal. Start of the third. See from Vadasco. Just makes you play one more shot, though, Nadal. Executed beautifully there. it up he's made those uh, on several occasions tonight but as uh, John correctly said you just are starting to see facially and the expressions that Rodesco is putting together that he's feeling under a bit of stress maybe not feeling that he can continue the standard the high standard that he's produced in the opening two sets
Well, two great points in this game for Vadesco, and uh, both of them mm -hmm. exceptionally well played. But the worry is, though, he's having to now come up with some incredible shots just to stay in this game, and he's not having many easy points like he was in the first. Now that's from that range has been deadly yeah, tonight. Yeah. Just past that service box area and the return's not deep enough there on oh, that one's just inside it and he can rip it either side If he appeals, he'll. I saw it good. Jake Garner saying he saw it good. I think we all did. Juice. Yeah, inside the line. It's interesting that Jake Garner had a, a, a verbal discussion with Nadal midway through the second set about coaching. Fedesco on three occasions alone in this service game has said something to his corner and got a response back. Fedesco into double figures on the aces. This one just catching. A, a little bit of a worrying sign just a couple of shots in this game he's still in this game he's rescued himself very well but he he's gone for a couple of shots that we didn't see in the first set and set and a half where he was in control when he was aggressive occasionally he missed but the last couple it's almost like his legs are not quite there and he's going for something that the odds are way against him making Fedesco calling this one. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> this is dangerous. <laughs> he's messed up once on the, doing this. First time also, he looks like he's puffing a little bit. Yep. And how does Hawkeye view this one? It was deep, we know for sure, but was it good? And it was by the looks of that. Yep. <laughs> Has two so twice in this match, Vodasco has stopped the play, gone to Hawkeye with the firm belief that the ball had gone long, and twice he's been proven to be incorrect. Third break point of this game for Nadal. Produced his best tennis on the break points. Guillermo Nadal in that rally for me, just just doing enough on that ground stroke. Got himself in the in. He's on the back foot. Didn't do enough with it. Oh, it's wild. He's on the edge, I think. You, yep. We all feel, I think, he's on the edge. Yep. Vodasco. 
Well, the serve is really it's the thing that's keeping him in this game. That was another opportunity. He missed the volley, but he's put some big serves on these break points down. He might be able to get away with this game with some more big serves. Made it on the line, and Adele breaks. It may well just be the break that shatters the hopes of this man who's played so well up until now. Two love Nadal. Oh, this one just curved in, was probably going out until the last moment. And then it just dropped in. New balls in play. Got to think Vadasco if he's going to get back on level terms needs to do so now. Oh, that would have been spectacular if that had gone in. <laughs> so quick. Still so dangerous because he's got the the potential to hit these type of shots from anywhere. This is the uh, type of response that we wanted to see from Vadasco. Nadal didn't, but everybody else probably did. Inch perfect. Three points to break back here for Vadasco. from Vadasco. Nadal, I'm sure, just silently seething. He allowed uh, Vadasco to get back on level terms, but uh, you've got to hand it to the more inexperienced player at this stage. He was worth the break. I, I, that one I couldn't see coming at all. Uh, after the two love, I thought uh, it looked to me like his mind was certainly wavering a bit. And Nadal being Nadal, I, I thought that game he would really bunker down and hold that serve but that was really well two of those points were just pure brilliant from Vadasco that really wasn't the doll's fault that last one was not a great great forehand but still that's an awesome response but there were just signs in that previous game of just yeah he thought little, he was going well he's looking a little bit leggy too he was yeah. he was trying to go for some shots that were just way way off the court with not much chance of success and that's a, that's normally a sign when someone legs legs start to go they start taking unnecessary risks because they just feel that they can't stay out there for the long rallies 
But then what a response in that last game. And he's still got that firepower where you can't count him out because he can just string winners together. And that was uh, one of his best games of the whole match. <laughs> Fabulous match. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully uh, the women's final uh, tomorrow will uh, provide us with the same sort of fare. We'll have that live for you on the red button. Uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 8.30. 7.30 here at night is normal here in Melbourne. The first time the women's final has been played under the lights at uh, the Rod Laver Arena. Should be a, a special atmosphere. There's Roger Federer firmly tucked up in bed right now and uh, no doubt enjoying this one as much as we are and everybody else here on Rod Laver. It's, it's been a surprisingly close semi-final. So back on serve after early exchanges of breaks in this third set. Verdasco 1 2. Just more examples. The pace he can get off that forehand, and you. Went to Dasco's forehand. You you wouldn't really hear talk about it being sort of in the top five, top even possibly top ten weapons on the tour, but. I think after watching him during this tournament, you'd have to put him in the top five in that in that category of the forehand side. Anybody that can take Nadal off the court with a stroke like he's done tonight, it's got to be pretty awesome, and he certainly has done that with the forehand. What? Easy hold. Yeah, very impressive. Two games. Yes, having looked like he was just starting to panic mentally and maybe a touch physically at the start of this third. But Asko's uh, found some renewed vigor out here. The uh, mental state of his uh, game as well as just... Uh, Come back to him. He's firmed up in that area as well. I wonder whether the early stages of this third set was largely due to the way Nadal finished off the second with that running forehand shot down the line that you won't see too often and, and taking the set. Oh. 
Tarantino. Tedesco now has hit a staggering 53 winners. I'm not sure if anybody's ever done that to uh, Nadal before after only two and a half sets. That nothing shot from the doll that sat. 30 15. Nadal's miss hit landed very short. This one here. And that one very easy. Nadesco to get on top of. Now a little opening here at 30 all. Expecting, I'm sure, from his racket strings. Vadasco quickly onto it. it. Hasn't hit this shot very well tonight, the drop shot. Vadasco has been able to read them all. He missed a couple when he just pushed them wide, but he's also made three or four winners from that shot. That was a bit of a gift. Sprung out to an early lead in Nadal at the beginning of the third to Love. Dasko potentially on a bit of a roll right now. Could respond with three games on the bounce. Certainly had a chance there. Yeah, 
in the dunk. No real indication that Rodasco was going to come all the way to the semi finals, bearing in mind that this is the first time he's won five consecutive matches on a hard court. He was made the final in Brisbane at the start of the year, so he possibly could have pointed to the fact that he arrived here in good shape and in good form. But when you haven't won a series of matches, more than four matches on a hard court, how could you have picked this one? No. <laughs> no, certainly didn't. That's for sure. There's Nadal's racket being taken off to the string. I think he's already done that once tonight. It'll take about 20 minutes. The stringer or stringers, which are just underneath this stadium court, will no doubt have Nadal's tensions already in their little books or fully aware of the way that Nadal likes his rackets to be produced, strung. I don't know why, though, w uh, w they do that when they've got Time. nine in their bag. They're all strung at the same tension. I don't understand why they bother to get another one done in the middle of the match. They've still got another eight left. Yeah. He, maybe he has, well, favourite ones, but I would, they're all the same, aren't they, now? It's not like in the old days with the wood rackets where they definitely would be different. Yeah. Well, maybe it's starting to get a bit cooler down there, as yeah. you probably expect, what, 20 to 11 at night now, and there was a cool change predicted this evening from the 40-degree-plus temperatures we've had over the last four days. Maybe he just felt that uh, something that would be slightly looser a might help him get through the, the pace and through the court a bit more. Yeah. They are all the variations that you have to take into account in Australia. It's not just about hitting tennis balls. Just must be a nightmare though to play Nadal. And he just gets every ball back and you just got to hit another one. Bit casual, not a very good volley there. Missed it by a long way. Didn't have his head level with the ball there. That was a bit of a lazy shot. So well tonight. Fifteen on. That was a big point, and he just made that forehand look so easy, and it was not. The Dasco thought he was going to get that. I think when he saw him chasing for it, I, did, I think he thought 15, 30, he wasn't going to get it, and he was a bit casual. Didn't close and cut the angle off there. What speed! That's a joke. Huge point here right now. Through on the baseline, Ross and Dahl would have challenged. Not a very good return of serve, though, again from Nadal. Second serve, mid court.
It's remarkable. Truly remarkable play, and no surprise that Vadesco is frustrated. Probably against anybody else in the game. He'd have won that point halfway through the rally. Nadal just kept putting the ball back, retrieving, and extracted the error. Break point. Once more, Vadasco has just got to regroup. Second time the Dahl has broken in this set. Modesco on the previous occasion broke straight back to love. Somehow, Modesco's got to find a way to respond again in similar fashion. Oh, the defense of Rafael Nadal in that game, some of the shots he got back were just remarkable. Picked the wrong way. Well read. And Nadal wary of that forehand. Went off to the backhand. Yeah, too good, that one. Beautifully lined up there. An unusual mistake there. Big point as well. Surely not another break back. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me tonight. I've been surprised already by the quality of Vadasco. Close to three hours now, and he's been exceptional. It is a break back. And <laughs> that's that. 
just when you think Rafael Nadal is starting to take control, Fernando Vadasco just hits back and reminds you he's still alive in this semi final. Back on serve in the third. And now we're getting to the business end of the set as well. And it's a worry for Nadal with that break that he just lost again. We've seen time and time again in this match how capable Vadasco is of stringing winners together. He's a dangerous man. And that really, that whole break sort of stemmed really from that first point that Nadal should have won. Thank you very much. Where he had the easy uh, put away and went back to the uh, same place where Vadasco was standing. And that sort of set the tone for the game. Unusual for the, this for Nadal to break twice and get broken back immediately. Well, it's uh, certainly the best three sets of tennis I've seen uh, throughout the tournament. Yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, without question the best night session we've had, yep. night match. Yep. But uh, arguably one of the most unexpected <laughs> of matches. We all know, knew rather that Vadasco was playing well. He had to be to get through to this stage, but. I don't think anybody truly believed that he would be pushing the world number one like he is. And still in with a shot of taking a two sets to one lead. So the winner to face Roger Federer will have the men's final live for you. Sunday morning on the BBC, 8.30 in the morning. Sort of almost a mirror image of the first point on the on uh, the previous game when uh, Dasco there looked like he was going to win that point and went back to where Nadal was uh, standing. Fifty nine. Still at 71%. His first serve percentage, that's quite remarkable. Nadal at 75%. And still hasn't served a double fault yet in this match for Vadasco. Unbelievable. Take it, did he? Just wanted to bury that ball. 30 I think wisely just going to the towel as has Nadal. Just drifting a long way back now behind the baseline again. He's getting back into that 
sort of mode of not doing much with the ground strokes again. Letting Vadasco take over in the rallies. Just uh, showing us all how uh, close Nadal's slice was to the top of the tape. Look at this, skimmed, stayed very low. Line in the third set. Four games off. Remember these two had met six times before, and Nadal had won on every occasion. He'd only dropped the one set, and that was on the grass of Queen's Club back in 2006. All the other matches had been comprehensive victories for Nadal. He never dropped more than four games in a set. One love set. One six one set six two several of six two sets from the doll. Nice attacking forehand there from the doll. Just gone three hours of play. Maybe 
expect Nadal to just raise the tempo like he did towards the end of the second set. Pretty much every uh, step of the way, every inch of the way, Vadasco has been his rival. Three hours and they still haven't played three sets yet. Imagine no. if this had been earlier on the week and it had been following a ladies. <laughs> it, would be, it could be two, three, four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah, could well be. Some of the ladies going long, they were finishing at 10.30, 11. Yeah. So we'd be coming up to two o'clock in the morning and probably staying another two hours. <laughs> yeah. Could have gone past Hewitt Baghdatis of last year. <laughs> Set all the records, that one finishing at 4.30 in the morning. Time. Just hope next year the uh, organisers have uh, learned to lesson somewhat and we'll just schedule the one main singles match at 7.30 and maybe a doubles afterwards. Or even just flip the men and the women round so the men play at 7.30 and the women play afterwards. Yeah. All things uh, being equal, as Federer said the other day, the days of equality. Why can't the women play uh, second night match rather than first all the time? Anyway, we'll see. That's uh, a point to be debated maybe after the championships and before next year. So bring it back to the present for Vadasco. He's serving to stay in the third set. Some good uh, defensive play then from Vadasco. A couple of times there, Nadal really putting some extra juice on the ground strokes, and he held his ground really well. Adult, because he dropped a couple short in early exchanges of that rally. And Vadasco rather let him back in the point. Just this one here. You open up the angle if you don't hit a winner. And that's what happened. Now, slight opening for an adult.
serve down the sideline. Nadal just there with his movement, looking for the swinging serve down the middle. Didn't flinch, did he, at 30 all? Didn't even seem to think that he was two points away from losing that third set. Looks like he has total confidence in his serve. Gets himself out of trouble again with two big serves. Now the pressure switches. The second double fault from Nadal. Oh, that's an extreme yeah, angle. Nadal holds for a 6-5 lead. Vesco's uh, had a busy championship, made the quarterfinals of doubles with Davis Cup teammate Feliciano Lopez. So he's played a lot of tennis the uh, last 10 days or so. And uh, as we've already said, this is the furthest he's ever gone by a long way in, in a Grand Slam. But has looked the part. Hasn't oh, looked out of place here at all. Not at all. He's been awesome. He really... Uh, and he's so exciting to watch because he's got that mixture of that sort of brilliance at uh, very the sort of flair that he has and he combines that with uh, now you know the defensive play is a lot better and also mentally he hangs in there before he was very flaky he's up and down good winners but a lot of bad losses but now he's, he's playing a much more of a smarter game out there 
and the serve has been excellent tonight. 72% for serves. He's, he's got to keep that percentage up, though, because it's setting himself up for the second shot where he can take command of the rally. If that percentage starts dropping and he starts giving Rafa a few more second serves to work on, then, then that uh, things may switch around. But even when he's looked a bit suspect, the serve has got him out of trouble. But once again, he's under pressure being a game down in this set. So for the second time of asking, Vadasco will serve to stay in the third. And, uh, as you will uh, always expect from Nadal, he'll be uh, chasing a break here. That's First overall of the evening, Jake Garner. Clearly feeling confident. Start with getting into a tie break. Back on that one. 40 15. Got to keep concentrating here, Vitasco, even at 40 15 with uh, Nadal. of old I think just going for something that was overly pretty shall we say it didn't need to be an angle that maybe wasn't really there oh. we do go into a tie break dice number 12 from Vadasco This is uh, where Vadasco is, is truly dangerous. First set went to a breaker, he won it seven points to four. And in that tiebreak just flashed a couple of winners. And that uh, is what Nadal will have to be wary of, that from nowhere, Vadasco can just uncork some winners. And in a tiebreak, it can be lethal.
struggled tonight, Nadal, to get away from that forehand side. One on. It's obviously his natural inclination to go for that one. That would be normally going to a right hand as backhand, but that one, time and time again, we've seen Vadasco just step into it and just crunch it down the line. Nadal was hoping for a free error, really, from Vadasco's racket. But again, Vadasco has been so good at just bouncing back after a disappointment. Remember, he was down twice a break of serve in this third set and hit straight back. So just the one mini break is not insurmountable odds for Vadasco. Loose. Four one. Nadal. Well, if he ever needs the surf to work now. This is the time he's got to get this one going at one four. It's only it's only a mini break. It really needs both these points. Guarantee in this tiebreak that Nadal is not going to gift Vadasco a point. He'll make uh, his countrymen earn it. It's been a, an animated Vadasco corner tonight, hasn't it? His father on the right hand side, the main cheerleader in the middle. getting involved. I wonder if Nadal is going to challenge. No, he won't. Yeah, it was good. First serve. It's a first serve for Vadasco, and if Hawkeye was used by Nadal, it was proven to be in. Again, Five, two, not a good tiebreaker so far from Vadasco. This tiebreaker, in particular, more to me, just about mental application. Yep. Just Nadal's stubbornness 
of uh, not making any errors. Happy to set his stall six feet behind the baseline and play the retriever. Let Vadasco make the errors. So far, he's obliged. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Four set points for Nadal. Double figures in the aces and into a two sets to one lead. Another enthralling set of tennis goes the way of the world number one. Nadal just uh, going for a break. Now again, you just look at Vadasco and wonder, particularly when you go to that shot, uh, how he's going to come back at Nadal. Well, that's exactly right. Almost three and a half hours now of tennis. And this type of quality, if you just look at that last set, the winners again from Adasco, very high, but for the first time he's made more unforced errors than winners, which is not a good sign. 11 for Nadal, a few more than he has in the other sets, but seven unforced errors, very, very consistent in that regard. Still keeping the surf, first serve percentage up very well there for Dasco. For Dasco just basically fell off in the tiebreaker. Until then, he had uh, had the right combination of being aggressive and and being steady. It just just fell apart in that tiebreaker, and he just isn't used to being in this type of position in the semi-finals of a Grand Slam, playing a match of this length against a player of this quality and to be able to, to su sustain the sort of attacks that he's been doing without having letdowns just proved a little bit too much just at the end of the set in the tiebreaker but that's all it it would take and Nadal is just ready always ready to pick up the pieces played a very good tiebreaker himself so now you know the old questions again with Vadasco how much fight has he got left in him? Has he got the stamina? Nadal certainly has. It looks like he could play another five sets. Well, gone for the apple there. Used to seeing the bananas. Time. Well, not too much body fat there. Well, Roger Federer must be absolutely loving this. I'm sure he'd like this to go to five sets. Great semi-finals, though. And the only hope is that whether it goes four or five, that they're both players manage to keep this standard up because uh, the quality has been absolutely phenomenal. At least for Desco. Fourth set. Can open up the serving in the fourth set. And not have to be chasing the set as he was in the last one.
15 bucks. Yeah. Thirty fifteen. Well, any thought that Modasco uh, may be uh, deflated, game, having lost that third set on the tiebreak, uh, get again a comfortable hold and a one-love lead. We'll have both the singles finals live for you on the BBC. The women's final will be on Saturday morning at 8.30 on the red button. Dinara Safina against Serena Williams. Williams going for her 10th Grand Slam singles title. And then on Sunday morning, BBC Two at 8.30 will have the men's final. Roger Federer vying to equal Pete Sampras's uh, record of 14 Grand Slams up against the winner of this one. And if it was Rafael Nadal, it would be the rematch that we've all wanted in a Grand Slam final. They haven't met since that uh, late night encounter at Wimbledon six or seven months ago. What uh, a match that was. Also have highlights of the uh, women's final on uh, BBC One at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, just in case uh, you're already occupied on Saturday morning. Thirty on. Just starting to miss a few more of those, trying to explode down the line. Tell you one thing that hasn't changed uh, for, da for Vadasco after three hours and 31 minutes, it's his hair. <laughs> hasn't moved, has it? No. Yeah, 
Vidal uh, equals up early stage of the fourth. One game off. Temperatures that thankfully predicted to drop overnight, uh, a westerly change coming across Victoria. Being uh, forecast around 35.